Hi, my name is Kit Franson and I'm the Customer Training Manager in the CDS Group at Train. Today I'm going to talk about underfloor air distribution systems in Tray 700. We will start with today on what are underfloor air distribution systems or UFAD. We'll then discuss the basic calculation methodology and how to model it in Trace. Then we'll top it all off with an office example from the new file wizard. Let's begin with discussing what is underfloor air distribution. UFAD systems typically deliver conditioned air to the space through diffusers mounted in the raised floor. You can see in the diagram on the right that this swirling supply air mixes with air from within the space, creating a mixed air region in the lower portion of the space. Then, temperature stratification occurs in the upper portion of the space. So, what are some of the potential benefits of this system type? As you can see in the figure, temperature stratification in the conditioned space will result in higher temperatures at the ceiling typically higher than the room thermostat set point, which will change the heat transfer dynamics in a room and between floors. However, this system only needs to condition a portion of the space, thus lowering airflow and reducing fan energy. UFAD systems also provide supply air at higher temperatures when compared to overhead systems based upon the maximum difference specified by ASHRAE 55. As a result of the higher supply air temperature, the potential exists to increase airside economizer operation hours in certain climates. Lastly, thermal comfort is key for a UFAD system. Since air is being delivered through the floor, the potential exists to place diffusers near the feet of the occupants, which can improve thermal comfort. This allows for ventilation air to be directly delivered to the occupants, so the efficiency of delivering ventilation increases, which also improves indoor environmental quality. Now that we understand the basic benefits of a UFAD system, let's dive into the TRACE methodology for calculation. The TRACE methodology uses an algorithm that is based on research from the CBE at University of California as well as using some methods from the Energy Plus engine. The basic steps of the calculation are as follows. First, Trace must determine the stratification height, which is based on the buoyancy flux of heat source and moment flux of cooling jets. There are several equations based on research that determines the stratification height. This stratification height is also based on the diffuser, which in turn gives the effective airflow and the angle of airflow distribution. Next, based on the stratification calculation, an average occupied zone temperature is used to calculate the fraction of total space sensible loads. This fraction of total space sensible load is used to calculate the load to the upper stratified layer, which in turn will calculate and determine our return air conditions. Then, Trace will determine the diffuser CFM based on occupied layer fraction loads. And finally, the iteration of this calculation has to occur because of the constantly changing loads which in turn we need to reach steady state for our analysis. Some pitfalls of the trace simulation are that it does not let you input the type of diffuser, number of diffusers, and area diffusers. Additionally, it does not account for the configuration of the underfloor plenum. So as an example, we don't delineate between a series configuration plenum versus a reverse series plenum, which can impact thermal performance. If you're interested in seeing our assumptions made for the calculation, please contact us at CDS Help. Now that we know what UFAD is and the basic calculation methodology, let's talk about how to model UFAD in Trace 700. We can start by talking about the five system types that are available. You will notice that all these systems have a coil bypass. To turn off coil bypass, remove it through the dehumidification input in Create Systems Temp Humidity tab. By default, all UFAD systems will have a supplier temperature of 63 degrees Fahrenheit. This can be changed by editing the temperatures in Create Systems Temp Humidity tab. Trace defaults to 63 degrees F because it is sufficient to meet the thermal comfort at the feet of the occupants. Otherwise, too cold of air will be uncomfortable. Let's start off with the first system type, which is UFAD Variable Air Volume with Baseboard Heating. This system type has heating which is provided through the baseboard and is supplement when the zone reaches its minimum airflow. Next, we have the UFAD variable air volume with fan-assisted reheat. This system has a secondary fan activated during heating and draws air through the terminal heating coil. 
but not, does not pull air from the zone. We then have the UFAD constant volume system, which has baseboard heating to provide supplemental heating for any possible envelope or skin loads. We then have the UFAD parallel fan-powered variable air volume system. This system type has air recirculated at minimum stop, which is the minimum airflow, and the secondary fan operates only in heating mode. And finally, we have the UFAD series fan-powered VAV system. This UFAD series fan-powered system has a secondary fan that activates continuously as the room is occupied. Now that we have an understanding of the available UFAD system types in Trace 700, as well as the appropriate calculation methodology, let's head into the program and talk about the other important variables and its relationship to UFAD systems. Assuming we have a project created, let's start with the Options tab in Create Systems. So we'll open up Create Systems and click on the Options tab. This tab is where you define several different parameters, but what we're going to focus on today is the Economizer. By leaving the input blank for the on point, Trace will use the design supplier temperature as the control point for the economizer. Since UFAD systems typically have higher supplier temperatures than conventional systems, this can mean a higher rate of economizer operation, which may reduce mechanical cooling. Next, let's look at some other parameters here in the advanced options section. You'll see here in the top right that we have a section related to displacement ventilation slash underfloor parameters. So the first topic of consideration here is deciding where the incoming supply airflow is. So in this case, we'll look at the supply air path slash duct location input. If no duct, supply via underfloor plenum, or supply via underfloor displacement ventilation is selected, heat transfer between underfloor and space will occur. However, if ducted through underfloor plenum, or supply via sidewall displacement ventilation is selected, no heat transfer between the underfloor and space will occur. For some additional considerations, we can also input a underfloor plenum height here, which is defaulted at one and a half feet. And you can also change the conductive resistance of the raised floor, which this is an R value, not a U value. The last input here is the space sensible gains to the occupied layer. Since this is a UFAD system, you can either let trace calculate how much load is going into the occupied layer as described from the calculation methodology, or you can input a value that is calculated outside the program. Lastly, one more section here in Create Systems I want to focus on is the supply duct slash other losses. Upstream nominal leakage fraction is assumed to bleed into corridor return air path, while the downstream nominal leakage is assumed to leak into the occupied layer. This input is typically used for UFAD systems in case you have a leaky underfloor plenum. In addition to all this, if you want to learn more information about any of these inputs, be sure to press F1 to get additional information. Now that we looked at the systems, let's focus on the other aspects of the program. Next, let's discuss the Create Room section of the program and its relationship to the UFAD system type. So when we open up Create Rooms, let's start with the Walls tab. There's really only one input to pay attention to here, and it's the percent wall area to underfloor plenum. If left blank, this input will calculate the wall assigned to the underfloor plenum based on the plenum height and the floor to floor height. However, if you have a different wall for the underfloor plenum, so as an example, one can install extra insulation on the portion of the external wall below the raised floor in order to minimize the heat transfer, you will need to use this input. So you'd end up creating two walls, one with 0% wall area to the underfloor plenum and one with 100% wall to the underfloor plenum. As a special note, Trace assumes that all the wall area assigned to the underfloor plenum is opaque and that the underfloor plenum is sealed from outdoor air infiltration. Next, let's move on to the internal loads tab. The only field to pay close attention to here for affecting the stratification of a space is the workstations input. This field defines the number or density of computer workstations located in the room. For HVAC system types that rely on thermal stratification, such as UFED, this value helps define the number of thermal plumes to derive that stratification. Moving on to the Airflows tab, and if you're applying 62.1, this is where you can input the zone distribution effectiveness of the supply air. For a UFAD system, you would want to select floor cooling supply and ceiling return, and obviously you'd want to do the same 
for the heating portion as well. This changes the ventilation effectiveness since supply air is delivered at the occupant's feet, which may lower or increase the overall total ventilation rate depending on which mode you're in of cooling or heating. Finally, let's look at the partition slash floors tab. This is where you can input a floor in between the spaces to model the appropriate heat transfer for underfloor plenums. When you create a floor, input the proper characteristics of the floor and select the external temperature method to adjacent room. You will then need to select the room that is below this current room through this input here. For heat transfer between the current room's underfloor plenum and the ceiling return air plenum of the room below, the heat transfer occurs directly between the subfloors separating the two spaces. However, if the current room has a plenum intervening between it and the adjacent room below, the heat transfer from the adjacent floor is transferred into the plenum. So, in general, the underfloor supply air temperature or airflow will be a function of many factors including the entering plenum supply air temperature and the heat transfer from the envelope surfaces comprising the underfloor plenum which is including the raised floor and the floor slab below it. Okay, so now that we saw all the important input parameters, let's take a look at the following example using the new file wizard. We will use all default inputs from the templates except for applying ASHRAE 62.1-2007. So to save time, I already created this example using the new file wizard and then copied the rooms to make two floors. If you want more information on the new file wizard, please see a previous video completed by Haley Goslinga. First, like any file you create or you open up, we need to look at the Create Templates section of the program. In this case, for the purpose of this video, we're only going to focus on the inputs relevant to UFAD systems. First of all, we need to go ahead and select the appropriate template that's being used for this building, which is Wing 1 and we can look at the workstations input. In this case we have a density of one workstation per person which I find appropriate for a office space so I'll leave this as default. Next we can head into the airflows tab and take a look at the ventilation rates for this template. So when we open up wing one you can see that the ASHRAE 62.1 calculation is going to be applied for this specific room and it has brought in the people and area based inputs um, for the office space type. Prior to creating this video here, I've already done the cooling easy and heating easy inputs as appropriate for a UFAD system type. So for cooling we have 120 percent effectiveness and heating we have 70 percent effectiveness. In a typical scenario for a remainder of this file you want to verify all the thermostat construction and room inputs for the templates, but since I've already completed that I will move on. And now we can head into the rooms and add floors into our spaces to simulate the heat transfer between the overhead and the underfloor plenums. We will need to change the external temperature method to adjacent room and select the room below it. So what we can do is find a second floor room, which in this case is wing one, room one, north, floor two. And you can see I've already inputted a floor here. We just got to make sure that adjacent room is selected for the external temperature method and then the room below it which is wing one room one north is selected for the adjacent room to simulate that heat transfer between this room and the room below it. So once we have completed all of our inputting the floors which I've already done in advance we can now focus on these systems. We can go ahead and select the proper UFAD system type which is already done from the list in the selection tab. So I've already chosen underfloor air distribution parallel fan power VAV system type. Then we need to click on the advanced button and we need to turn on the ASHRAE 62.1 2007 calculation for the system so we can run the ventilation calculation at the system level. So in this case for this input make sure you're selecting standard 62.1. Next we can move on to the options tab and click the advanced options button. In this exercise we're only going to adjust one thing here and it's input a downstream constant leakage fraction to simulate some leaky underfloor plenums. So in this case I've already inputted 5 percent for our downstream constant leakage fraction. Once that's set we can hit OK. We can go ahead and close out of create systems. In a typical situation you'd want to then assign all your rooms to the system type which has already been done. And then we can go ahead and calculate the file. 
So we can do this by hitting the calculate and view results, and then by hitting the calculate. So after a file is calculated, now we can take a look at all the reports that Trace has to offer. Today I'm going to focus on three which I find very important for UFAD system design. We'll start off with the ASHRAE standard 62.1 report, which I use to verify my inputs to the outputs. So in this case, I wanted to make sure that for my particular spaces, that they match the ventilation rates and the effectiveness values that I've inputted. So for cooling easy and heating easy, they match at 1.2 and 0.7. And then for my RP and RA values, I have 5 and 0.06. So I can confirm that Trace has the correct values, and it's going to be using the ASHRAE standard 62.1 calculation based on these ventilation rates. Next, we can focus on another report, which is the checksums report. I like to take a look at the room checksums report, because then I can focus on it one room at a time, make sure that the loads are being calculated correctly, and that the return air temperatures are being calculated correctly. So within the space cooling section of the checksums, which is the center column here, Trace is going to report the space sensible values to the occupied layer. So it's not going to include any loads that go into the unoccupied layer. You're going to notice then that some internal gains are not going to equal what you've inputted into the program. And that is because Trace has already calculated the load to the occupied layer based on the previous calculation methodology that I discussed. And it's going to display this value here. So as an example, let's take a look at the lightings, which is it's just purely sensible load. In this case, it's outputting 2800 BTUH. But in fact, we've inputted 1.3 watts per square foot. We have a 900 square foot space, which turns out to be roughly 4000 BTUH. So you can see that there's only a portion of the lighting load going into the space, which means that the supply CFM is going to be calculated based only on this space occupied load. Another thing we can take a look at is the cooling coil peak section, which is going to display the entire load that the coil is going to see, which is from the occupied layer and the unoccupied layer. This is important because then you can verify that your inputs is going to match what is in the output here. So for the lighting, I said we're roughly 4,000 BTUH. You can see that the net total that the coil is going to see is 4,000 BTUH. Another interesting thing to look at are the floors and adjacent floor loads and this is where you can kind of decide and see whether or not this load is reasonable based on what you've inputted in for your floor construction. Next we can focus on the temperature section in the top right, one of which is the supplier dry bulb temperature which is 63 degrees which is what Trace defaults to. Then we also have the return air temperature of 83 degree F here. Typically, you should see a value of 5 degrees F or greater than the room set point temperature, so you can see that we're modeling stratification correctly. Once we take a look at the temperatures, we can look at the air flows here. So another important factor is the diffuser CFM. Most spiral floor diffusers deliver between 10 and 100 CFM, so make sure that the amount of diffusers in the building design can meet this total supply CFM. Lastly, on this report here, we'll take a look at the main fan CFM, which is different than the diffuser CFM. The reason why it's different is because of the 5% downstream leakage fraction that we've inputted into the program. There are many other outputs on this report that you can use for your UFAD system design, but I figured that those are probably the most important things you need to look at. Next, we can take a look at the psychrometrics report. This report will show you state points throughout the whole system, so you can see if your system is modeled adequately based on what the design is. These state points are going to show you what the supply or return air temperatures are as well as what the occupied set point temperature is and its relative humidity. This report is then going to give you a basis for thermal comfort design which is relatively important for UFAD system types as it is a driving feature to why it's applied. So here are just a couple reports you can look at. There are many more reports in Trace that you can look at for any sort of system design as well as verifying loads and certain other outputs. But hopefully this gets you going in the right direction. Here are a list of additional resources for you so you can understand the real world application of UFAD as well as how to model UFAD in Trace 700. Thanks and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Good luck energy modeling.